It's really tough because, especially in hip hop, which is the industry that I work in, there's so many things going on that's like nudging artists to just like be more flashy and spend more money and be more frivolous. Remember that cash and money can also work for you. So it's like not saying that those are poor investments all the time, because sometimes that is quote unquote working for you to make more money. But I think that just assets over liabilities. I started interning for this group called Pack Div. So Pack Div brought me on a couple epic tours. One was with Pharrell and his band NERD, and the other one was with Mac Miller. When I was on tour with Mac Miller, I had this like aha moment of going like, I need my own client. I'll never forget, like when we were in Atlanta, I sent this kid that I knew from my hometown, Ventura, named Kyle, a Facebook message. And I was like, yo man, I think I have like the formula, the recipe that like, I think you can do it type thing. In the fall of 2011, I basically committed myself to managing uh, KID, Kyle. That's kind of like, how, that's how I started. The first year I started earning when Kyle started having like more mainstream success, the first thing I bought was like a car. I bought a Range Rover. And now, like I can sit here and tell you like, it was a used one, it was like a 2013, it was like, X amount of dollars. It wasn't like the most expensive car on the lot at all, right? And I could totally afford it. But I think that I don't regret it at all, but through that process, I just learned a lot about investments. You know, it's like the same essentially 50 grand that it caught the car costed. I also, a year or two later, bought a rental property that cost, I had to put 50 grand down on. Now, that rental property is like an asset and the car is a liability. Like if I, like when I look at the blue book value of my car, it's worth $15,000. You know what I mean? So like I just realized like, how do I make this an asset for me? And so I realized I have to like hold on to this car for eternity. The value of the property that I bought has gone up and it brings in cash flow. But that's like, that was one of the things where I learned, but I wouldn't regret it because I don't know if I'd go back and change anything about it. You know what I mean? I don't know if I would do it differently. I'm always in a space where I'm kind of redefining finance and just money in general. The more I learn from, you know, even people like Commune, the more it like kind of shifts my perspective on it. My parents really just instilling like living within your means and like being a great example of that. As I look back, I'm like, that's powerful, you know? Cause it's like the reason that we didn't have all these money uh, issues was because they were just locked in and ultimately like the path to financial freedom. That's something that I'm like really interested in where your the interest on your investments essentially cover your overhead. I think that that should maybe be the new American dream, right? It's interesting because there's this notion, especially in hip hop, that like people are like self-made. And I think that has, that becomes like a trend, but really like when you really look into these artists or these individual people, it's the team around them that is elevating the whole project. So it's like, you're only as strong as your team. You know, we're seeing a great example of that with even the Chicago Bulls documentary or Michael Jordan. In music especially, it takes a community to build up an artist. And yeah, I just, I feel really, really strongly about about like the strength of your team. I think that you, you really only go as far as like your team can take you.